Hi, this is lecture six of the course Privacy in Machine Learning and Statistics. Uh, today's lecture is going to cover uh, the exponential mechanism and a related mechanism called the report noisy max mechanism. And this is part one. Okay, so today what we're going to cover is a general design idea uh, for differentially private algorithms uh, based on a framework called selection problems. So I'll, I'll explain what that means via some examples, and then we'll talk about this sort of general design idea. Okay, so it helps to go through, I think, um, uh, so the, the, the set of problems we're gonna look at are called selection problems. And it helps to go through some examples to see what we mean by that. So the um, <clears throat> first example we're gonna look at is is uh, approval voting. Okay, so suppose we've got uh, something uh, we want to vote for, but something sensitive, and we want the vote outcome to be differentially private. So um, suppose we have a, a new class mascot, right? Uh, that's very exciting. Uh, unfortunately, so that makes us happy. Unfortunately, this mascot has like a terrible name. Okay, so the best thing that uh, you know I came up with was the name DP Doggy, which is like obviously a horrible name. So we want to vote on uh, a new name for our uh, mascot. The mas mascot, of course, is a Husky Terrier mix because this course is uh, joint between BU and Northeastern. Uh, we want to vote for a new name. So we've got a set of candidates. And um, in the scheme called approval voting, each person, each person I, submits a list of names they find acceptable, of name, names they like. So it's a, they submit a subset, xi, of uh, the set of names. So let's say the candidates are like numbered one through some number d. So uh, this is uh, bracket d, remember, is just shorthand for the subset of numbers from one to d. So each person submits a set xi of numbers between one and d. And uh, the winner of the vote should be, uh, it's the uh, candidate J with the most, who, the, it's the candidate who was liked or a candidate who was liked by the most, the largest number of people. Okay, so it's the chan candidate kit J with the highest score. And the score, the score will define as follows. So the score of candidate J on data set X is just the number of um, sorry, let me rewrite it over here. It's uh, the, the number of individuals who uh, named J in their set. Okay, so uh, we want our voting process to be differentially private. Um, and uh, what that means is that, you know, differentially private, private algorithms have to be randomized. And so it, this voting process can't always return uh, the exact winner of the election. But what we could hope for is that it returns a candidate who got a lot of votes, okay? And almost as many votes as the, as the actual winner. And so if, if there was a clear winner, we should recover that winner with really high probability. But if there was sort of a near tie, then it's okay if we get just like one of the top candidates, okay? So, you know, you could imagine a histogram of like who, you know, like how many votes each candidate got. And so like, you know, 
these ones are like, okay, but you know, we really shouldn't get the things down here. <coughs> and so we could define a notion of like how badly we, we did uh, by looking at the difference between the score of the uh, highest, the, the score of the winner of the election, or the, the, the score of the um, L candidate that got the most votes minus the score of the thing we actually output on our algorithm. Okay, so ideally we want this error to be small. So one thing we could try to do if we want to design a differentially private algorithm is to um, use the Laplace mechanism to release noisy scores for all the candidates. Or all candidates, rather. Um, and the problem is that that's actually not going to be a great algorithm. So it's, uh, you know, this, um, the, the noise magnitude will be because we've got like D, e, so each person can influence the score of anywhere between zero and D, all D of the candidates. And so the sensitivity of the vector of scores is actually D. Um, and so the amount of noise we would add uh, per entry to, you know, per score would be on the order of like D over epsilon. And so if we have lots of candidates, um, that's going to really perturb the scores a lot and, you know, potentially give us, uh, we might be outputting at the name of a candidate who really didn't get that many votes. Okay, so D over epsilon, that's, that's kind of big for today. We want to aim for something a lot lower than that. Okay, so D over epsilon is the amount of noise the Laplace mechanism adds and, and that'll, you know, potentially lead to us outputting a candidate who's uh, score would be, you know, at least D over epsilon worse than the best score. There, there, are, there are situations where that could happen. All right. So that's a, that was our first example. Our second example is going to feel a little different. So in our second example, we're going to look at pricing a digital good. Okay. So What's a digital good? Like imagine like an MP3 of a song um, you've recorded. So let's say, you know, to pass the time during the pandemic, you bought yourself a microphone, you've recorded uh, a song, you know, maybe it's like a parody of uh, the, uh, you know, 1979 hit by the Knack called My Sharona. So you've recorded like My Corona, you know, boom, 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 boom My Corona. All right, so that's a very catchy song. You want to sell. Um, you want to sell your this song online. And the thing you have to understand is, uh, what price are you going to charge? How are you going to set the price? Right. So. A simple way to think about this is that you might do a market study. And so you might go and collect um, data on, on how much people would be willing to pay uh, from n people. And then from person i, so for xi would be the maximum price that person i would be willing to pay for your song. Okay, so like you could represent this data as follows the sort of here's our price P. Let's go in, let's say, you know, it might be as high as like $2, probably less than that. Um, and then there's on the y axis here, the number of people. So the number of like, people I who are willing to pay like at least P dollars. 
So if you charge zero, then like that's everybody. Everybody's willing to pay zero. Um, and then as you sort of increase the price, you know, maybe it, it starts to decrease. Maybe, you know, maybe it hits gets pretty pretty low once you get past a dollar or so. All right. So your goal is to find a price at which to sell um, this product of yours. Okay, so like for example, you might choose like this price. And if you choose this price, then the amount of money you'll make is the uh, number of people who will, it's, it's the price you're gonna, you, you, the price you're charging times the number of people who pay that price. So it's actually like the area of this rectangle. Okay, so um, the quality of a price uh, for this set of people, assuming you you sell to these set of people and they pay what they say, you know, they they pay, they buy your song if if it's above their if it's below their um, limit price, then the amount of revenue you make is uh, p times you know this count the number of people such that uh, x i is at least p. Okay, so what, uh, what you're trying to do is extract as much, you're trying to make as much money off this song as possible because that like microphone you bought wasn't cheap, right? So you want the error, uh, your notion of error is gonna be the difference between um, the, the sort of best uh, revenue you could get. So we call that, let's call that Q max again. So Q max of X minus uh, whatever your algorithm outputs. Okay, so this is the actual, actual output price. And again, we're gonna assume that we wanna do this differentially privately, so we can't necessarily produce the best outcome. So like maybe the best point was, look, like was here, right? So that's like, you know, P star. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna make a little bit less money than that with this price P, and uh, that's gonna be our. our price. Now, um, with this, in this kind of setting, like adding noise might make no sense at all. Okay, adding noise sort of doesn't really make sense. Because like, for example, one bad situation you could get in if you wanted to like add noise to the optimal price, first of all, it's not clear what its uh, sensitivity is. In the worst case, it might be pretty high. Uh, but like, it also just like, even if you could add somehow add very little noise, it could still get you in a terror, you know, into a bad situation, right? Like one kind of weird thing that can happen is suppose the demand kind of looks like this. Okay, so everybody's, you know, willing to pay a dollar but nobody's willing to pay a penny more than a dollar, okay? So the best price to sell at is a dollar. If you add noise, you could reduce your price a little bit and that would be okay. But you might also like accidentally, if you add noise to a dollar, you might charge like a buck 10 and then like nobody's gonna buy your song and you're losing lots of money. Okay, so this is an example where um, like noise addition is probably just like the wrong way to think about this problem. It's a, it's a more general kind of optimization problem. What we're trying to do is find a good uh, output according to this score function. Okay, so uh, the two problems we've seen are examples of selection problems. The uh, voting example and, um, and the, uh, uh, the price the price setting problem. So there's a general um, sort of way to think about these. So the, they're specified. So a selection problem is specified by some set y of outcomes. So these are like possible uh, outputs. Um, and the score function, which maps y times 
and it takes uh, like an outcome and a data set and it produces a real number. And it's a measure of like, we'll call this the score function, but it's a measure of like how good Y is as an output for X, for data set X. And we'll say it's delta sensitive if um, for all possible outcomes, the score of the outcome is an is a is it has low sensitivity. So this function um, has satisfies the following so that it has sensitivity at most delta. So so once I for every way I fix the for every, for each outcome y, the resulting the function that takes a data set as input and produces uh, y, that function should have low sensitivity. So in other words, for all y and for all x and x prime that are in x to the n and that are neighbors, we should have that q of y x minus q of y x prime uh, in absolute value is uh, at most delta. Okay. So, this is the requirement we will have on our score function. Okay, and the exponential mechanism is a general differentially private algorithm that allows us to, um, that will, it will always be differentially private and it allows us to kind of approximately solve this type of selection problem. So here's what our algorithm will look like. Uh, so it will take an input, a data set X, as well as this score function, two input score function and uh, parameter epsilon, and also this number delta, which we'll just assume to be like a valid upper bound on the sensitivity. Okay, so in general, you have to kind of, for this, whatever score function you're using, you have to somehow figure out what the right delta is. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to define um, a probability distribution uh, P of Y equals Y such that, so the pro we want to define a probability distribution such that the probability of, e of any given outcome is proportional to e to the epsilon over two delta times the score of y given x. Okay, so um, this notation here means uh, proportional to uh, so that means it's it should be there should be some constant so the probability should be equal to some constant times this formula here. And then we're going to uh, return uh, a sample from this distribution, just one sample from the distribution. Y sampled according to this distribution. Okay, so that's our um, that's our probability distribution, and um, <coughs> this is our algorithm. Uh, okay, so so like what's going on? We're um, well, actually, before I, I try and give you some intuition for it, so let's just check. You know, when does this actually make sense? So when is this well defined? Like when does this algorithm actually like? You know, when is it possible to find this prob such a probability distribution? So one case is when. Um, if uh, if y is finite, okay. So if the set y is finite, 
we're um, you know we're fine in that case. Okay, we can always um, we, the the mechanism is always well defined. We can define the probability that y equals little y to be simply uh, e to the epsilon over two delta q of y given x. Um, divided by c sub x, where c is just a constant that makes everything add to one. So c is just the sum over, let's say, y tilde of e to the epsilon over two delta q of y tilde x. Okay, so we if we can, um, like when, when the set y is finite, then this constant always exists. And so we can always define this probability distribution. Okay. Um, if y is uh, like infinite or a continuous space, um, then, you know, maybe. Really, it just depends on, um, whether or not with this normalizing constant exists. And we'll see some examples where it does, but it may not. Okay, so like, let's just try and understand what's going on here. So for the example of like approval voting, or maybe I'll draw it down here. So we had this like input that looked, you know, we imagined that the election outcome looked like this. So again, what we want to do is define, you know, we want the probability of an outcome to be uh, proportional to e to the epsilon over two delta times the number of people who voted. And so essentially what we're doing is we're saying we're going to sample like the name of a candidate with probability that is exponentially large in the number of people who voted for that candidate. Okay, so so this person, you know, will get like lots of votes, lots of probability. This other person will get like somewhat less probability. This next person will get somewhat less probability. And then these people are going to get basically probability zero. So the, the distribution we end up sampling from will look, you know, something like this. Okay, so you'll get this very sharp drop off once you start getting fewer and fewer votes. Um, similarly, when um, uh, in the case of the pricing example, where like if my, you know, uh, pr price went down, um, I'm sorry. If my the number of um, people willing to pay a certain price sort of goes down something like that, then my revenue function, my score function is going to uh, look so the, the score function is going to look like this. Roughly, it'll be, you know, if, well, it, it, it's, its exact shape will depend on the, sh the shape of the demand curve. But then if I like feed this into um, the, uh, the exponential mechanism, the distribution we get on outcomes will look, you know, something like this. In, in particular, if the score function is sort of quadratic, then the then the distribution I sample from will be uh, roughly uh, Gaussian. Um, on the other hand, if we have that weird function where uh, that sort of input where everybody was willing to pay a dollar up to a dollar and nobody was willing to pay more than that, 
then uh, the distribution we would get in that case would actually uh, look uh, more like, you know, it would be increasing exponentially and then uh, back down to like very small. So it would look like that. So you'd have like almost no chance of getting samples that are like above a dollar and then you'd have sort of a fair amount of mass in the region just below a dollar. So you'd likely get a price like just under a dollar, which is sort of what you want. Okay, so just recapping where we are, we define this family of selection problems. Uh, so these are defined by a set of possible outcomes and a score function. And they, they um, any such problem defines a, an instance of the exponential mechanism. So that's an algorithm that takes a data set and samples an output with probability that increases exponentially with the score. Um, and then the, um, the thing that you know that you know funny things that are going on is that like how the the constant in that exponential increase is going to depend on the um, parameter epsilon and also over the the it, it's also going to depend on the 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 sensitivity delta um, and uh, we'll see why that is when we do the privacy analysis shortly. <clears throat> 